Hi my name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and today we are talking about two stroke direct fuel injection. So to fully understand this we need to uh, get a basic grasp on the difference between direct and indirect injection. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick a cylinder on here and we're going to have our injector sat there like that, that's absolutely fantastic, draw in and then we have indirect injection where we have a port and we have injection here. Now, we're not going to concern ourselves with two-stroke or four-stroke, we're just looking at ports, cylinders and the, where the actual injector sits. So, the difference between, just the terminology-wise, indirect means uh, where is oh, the, where the direct or indirect um, terminology comes from, where it is situated compared to the cylinder. So, indirect means that it's not squirting into the cylinder, it's squirting somewhere else, and direct injection means it's directly, it's squirting fuel directly into the cylinder. It's as simple as that. So, now we've sorted out that terminology, let's look at basically how they work. So, an indirect system, now back in the day they used to make um, single point injection, so just if you had a four cylinder engine or something like that, they'd have four runners like that to four cylinders, and then they'd put an injector here that sprays fuel um, into the uh, flow, pla fl flow path of your manifold and then hopefully it mixes into each cylinder as each cylinder requires air. The problem is with um, charge scavenging and charge pinching basically when each cylinder tries to rob the air in the manifold of when it opens because they're all at different times, um, you, you, you could get um, cylinder starvation and all sorts of it, so it wasn't very good control. Um, single point injection was cheap because it was one injector but you would get fuel starvation from different cylinders as they tried to rob air off each other and you don't have very good control and it wasn't very efficient both in um, combustion efficiency and it also wasn't very efficient in fuel efficiency because you couldn't control it that much, that well so then we went to multi-point injection which is basically the same thing you have four cylinders um, that's three cylinders idiot you have four cylinders and then you have your runners like this and you have an, in, an injection uh, injector per cylinder um, then you've got a you've got a, a lot better control you can um, meter how much fuel goes into each cylinder and so on and so forth um, but the way indirect injection works is it sprays fuel atomizes fuel um, in your port usually on the back of your valve which I've explained before then when your valve opens it lets fuel in that's for a four stroke for a two stroke Generally, if it's got an injection, it sprays it into uh, your manifold where your reeds are, and then when the air's drawn in, it takes the fuel with it. Same kind of principle. Um, direct injection, just like diesels and what have you, and you've got to remember, direct injection has been around for a hell of a long time. People seem to think it's this super technology, and we'll go into that in a minute why it's just not available everywhere. But direct injection, you can have two ways that you do direct injection. You can either have your piston at the bottom, dead centre, when your valve closes and then you spray fuel in like this or you can have a high pressure system where you wait until your piston is at the top of its stroke and just before ignition you spray fuel in. Now there's pros and cons to each and that's why it's very important, it's, it's un important to understand this when we look at two strokes. Um, if you do this uh, low pressure system basically You've let all your fuel and air, uh, your, all your air, sorry, into your cylinder. You've sealed up your cylinder, however you do that, and then you add the fuel. The problem with doing this is that this cylinder is generally at say one bar, you know, 40, 50, we'll round it up, 15 psi. So it's 15 psi in here, and generally your injector will be four or five bar, um, four or five atmospheres to uh, squirt the fuel in. It has to be higher pressure. One, it has to be higher pressure because it has to overcome the pressure in there. If it was uh, one bar in here and one bar in here, then nothing would go anywhere. Um, so you say, well, put two bar in here and there's one bar in here, then it will flow in, but it'll more dribble. What you want is you want a higher pressure, a pressure difference inside the injector to what's inside the cylinder, so that when you let the fuel out, it atomizes and expands, and that expansion is basically what pulls the fuel apart into minute tiny droplets. So that's how you do atomizing. It's the same thing as your little garden sprayer that you use for your cactus or something crazy like that. Um, 
the problem with this is when you spray like this, obviously engines are running really quickly, and when you spray into your uh, cylinder like this, the piston's obviously on its way up, and basically there's like a cushion of buffer of air because it's going so quick that you have a high concentration of fuel at the top and it just hasn't had time to mix properly like you can see here we've filled all this and bits like that bits of it make into this region so you haven't got a very good mixture which means your combustion uh, is lumpy it's not very clean combustion which means you have extra hydrocams that end up going out of your exhaust uh, the combustion is very efficient so you're not making the maximum amount of torque the reverse or the opposite to doing that or the other option you can do is you can compress the air until it's in a small enough region that when your injector injects in it's getting basically it's mixing with all the fuel so if you did the same thing in that same amount of time you're pretty much trying to fill up as much of that cylinder as you can the problem with this is that generally most engines um, have a compression ratio and we're not talking about diesels we're talking about petrols um, generally the compression ratio is between one uh, 10 and 12 to 1. So if it was one bar in the cylinder here or 15 psi, once we've got up to here it's 150, 200 psi in here. Now if it's 200 psi in here then you obviously have to well overcome that. So if you've got a 10 to 12 bar region in here then generally you're looking at putting in around about 200 bar for your just say let's just say 12 bar here one you've got to have a greater pressure difference so the actual fuel flows out but not only that is you have to put an awful lot more pressure in there to make it atomized properly like it would in this scenario or in a direct or an indirect um, indirect fuel injection so spraying into ports port um, pressure for, for injectors that spray into ports it's generally around about five bar so you can see this is 200 bar this is an awful lot of pressure so where does this fit in with our two-stroke? So one of the saving graces in a sense that people keep on talking about two-stroke and injection and how it's going to save the two-stroke engine and bring it all back and all the rest of it. Well, in our cylinder we have our transfer ports, we have our exhaust ports and one of the beauties of using direct injection for a two-stroke is that you will want to, you don't need to use your exhaust to do any back pressuring or anything silly like that anymore. You can just have your cylinder like this, and then this is the point. As soon as you close off your exhaust port, you can spray fuel into here. The problem is, is obviously we're getting really close to the top of our stroke, so the pressures are quite high. So let's just say this is between 8 and 12 bar in here. So just like with the other direct injection example we looked at a minute ago, you're going to have to go um, 200 and sometimes up to 2000 bar, it depends uh, where the biggest benefit is from that injector versus your surface area versus getting the best mixing. And seriously there are systems out there that go all the way up to 2400 bar for a gasoline direct injection because obviously we're talking about two strokes, we're talking about motorbikes here, so it's going to be um, a petrol system. 200 and to 2,000 bar, it's not about the range size, even 200 bar is an awful lot of pressure. It's a small amount of fuel, but it's an awful lot of pressure. And, you know, you're getting into diesel ranges here. You know, diesel ranges, common rail systems and all the rest of it generally have um, 200 bar, or, uh, you know, even higher, up to 2,000 bar, um, common rail systems and what have you. The reason why is they have to overcome not only the pressure that's in the cylinder but they have to atomize that fuel and it's not a linear scale it's an exponential scale. So what is the problem with doing this? You say we'll just do it 200 bar. 200 bar is an awfully <laughs> is awfully high an awfully high pressure to achieve um, especially when you're trying to go through fuel quite quick you know you, you need to squirt in 200, 300, 400 bar into a cylinder and if you're going at 16,000 rpm you need to do that 16,000 times a minute it's quite incredible the speeds um, but like I say diesels have had direct injection now there is a difference I must say quickly before someone else adds it in um, there is a difference between manic there is mechanical fuel injection which does uh, is over 100 years old and an electronic 
direct injection, which is a more modern thing since basically like the 50s, 60s. That's when the first time messing around with it. So why is this an issue for two strokes? Well, the beauty about two strokes is they have a crank casing, they have a couple of bearings, they have a crankshaft, they have a con rod, they have a piston, a cap on the top, a lid, and that's pretty much it. And your gearbox and all your gears are pretty much exactly the same they are for a four stroke. So the beauty, the benefits of two strokes is that they have got a good power to weight ratio, they've got, um, and they're quite lightweight, and they're really cheap to manufacture. The problem is, is that if you want to make your two-stroke engine and you have all your reeds and all your other things and your ports and your exhausts and your transfers and what have you, your piston and whatnot, um, the, the, the attraction of this engine for a manufacturer is that it is cheap. Um, it produces good power to weight ratio and it is cheap and it's light. And it's small, that's also a consideration. Um, so you want to go and add a fuel injector to this and this fuel injector has to produce um, between just say 200 and 400 bar of pressure which for lack of a better word is shitloads you know 200 bar let's see if I'll do my maths right will be uh, 2900 psi that's an awful lot of pressure you know, this is crazy pressure. It has to do this at 16,000 RPM when your engine's going as fast as it can, or 12,000 or whatever. But it has to do this really fast. It has to gain that pressure and do it really fast. Diesels uh, that still have to do the same thing, you know, this is still the same requirement for diesels. Diesels use a giant, great big mechanical pump. And the difference with diesels is, is diesel fuel itself is almost like an oil. So there are no... Um, there's no real oil supply to a diesel pump. The fuel itself oils, cools, and then is pressurised in the entire system. It also draws an awful lot of power out of the engine to um, basically uh, pressurise that fuel like that. Uh, the pumps themselves have to be very robust and heavy. And like I say, if you had a um, fuel pump like that for a, a little two-stroke, just say like a 250, the pump would nearly be half the weight of the engine. The pumps are quite expensive, and petrol itself is a really bad lubricant. It's terrible, actually. You know, it's like a solvent. It's more of a solvent for cleaning off oils and stuff. So you'd have to have an e a separate oil system and what have you. Um, you know, a little electric motors and stuff just simply can't. It's very hard to get to them pressures because of the, the, the torque loading on the motor and stuff, and to be reliable and to keep the whole thing going. Now there are two types of injections. You can use uh, port transfer injection. It's a lot lower pressure, that's a lower pressure system. The problem with putting an injector here is, again, most of it pisses out of the exhaust. Some of it comes back in and so forth. So your volumetric efficiency and you are wasting fuel. And because of that, this is why you burn a lot of uh, hydrocarbons, oil and fuel in your exhaust. And that's why the emissions. So we're trying to get around that emissions thing. So really, a port transfer injector isn't the best option. You can do it, and you'll but you'll be on the verge of the emissions uh, limit. And then next year, when they make a new emissions limit, you'll probably um, be shit out of luck, and you'd have to put that engine to bed. So manufacturers generally want to stay away from this type of um, injection direct, indirect, because that is still indirect injection. They want to stay away from that because it's not benefiting. They want to use um, combustion injection, direct injection. Like I said, the problem with it is, is that diesel, um, the whole point of a two-stroke is it's re relatively cheap and all the rest of it, and um, lightweight and what have you. You put one of these whacking great big pumps in there, it wouldn't be the size of a diesel one, obviously, because diesel is a 1.5 litre, 2 litre, etc. It'd be a smaller version of, but it'd still have to be robust, strong, and you'd have to have a lubrication system. And it's not so much like this engine where you can get away with uh, half arse lubrication, you know. If you put just say if you did it like a diesel, you used um, uh, petrol and then put oil in your petrol to what uh, to um, uh, you know oil your pump to get to these high pressures. Then you're still spraying that into the cylinder and burning it, so you're not really helping the situation whatsoever. You know, there's this thing where people think that direct and fuel injection is going to save two strokes. Um, it's possible. It's, it's you know you can stick a direct injection on a two stroke, no problem, but the cost, the complexity, uh, the weight of it, and all the rest of it, means that you are eating in to your two strokes benefits. Its benefit is it's light and simple, 
with a direct fuel injection system it becomes an awful lot more complicated, a lot more expensive, a lot heavier just to try and get around some of the shortcomings and short, you know, shortcomings of the two-stroke engine. Is two-stroke direct injection going to save the two-stroke? You'd have to be very, very creative and manufacturers just might not bother. Um, they might release one engine, see how it goes, see how it takes, uh, look at the cost sheet, you know, look at the bomb, the bill of materials and go, do you know what, it's just not literally worth it. Uh, you still, don't get me wrong, this isn't just a uh, two-stroke issue. The um, direct fuel injection of petrols in gasoline and petrol engines full stop, this is the issue. You know, the diesel lubricates the pump, it keeps it cool and all the rest of it. You don't have to have additional oil supplies. And diesels require it, and diesels have an abundance of torque, usually, generally because they're square engines or under square engines, they have an abundance of torque. And because they're low revving as well, that is the other issue. Uh, not the other issue, that is one of the other things to consider, is that diesels, diesels, because they are lower revving generally, especially big diesels for trucks and lorries, because they are lower revving, you don't have to demand so much from the pump or the injectors themselves. Um, the actual injector itself, because it is um, quite a precision uh, component, you, you're combusting fuel, you know, you're combusting fuel in here, so just like your valves in a four-stroke have got to take a battering, that injector's got to take a battering. And because you have to do that, just like with turbos that have uh, nickel alloys and stuff in there, turbine wheels, you know, the injector itself has to be made from ceramics and some sexy alloys so it doesn't melt and just, you know, fuck up. So that's a brief description of that. We'll go into it more if people want to know more about it. But in my opinion, and I must say this, you know, in my opinion, the, the direct fuel injection is not going to save the two-stroke in the long run. You know, it's kind of like... Um, you know, the last battle cry kind of thing. But uh, have you noticed as well that most of the companies that are doing two-stroke um, two stroke direct injection are either ones that are solely pretty much involved with motocross or, uh, you know, the big manufacturers like Kawasaki, Honda, Yamaha, etc. really aren't that interested. They might do one or two engines, but they're really not that interested in it because the, volume of, the volumetric efficiency of two-strokes is crap. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. This is probably going to kick people off again and again and again. But, it, like I said, the proof's in the pudding. Look what Kawasaki is doing. Look what other manufacturers are doing. Yes, there are, you know, a KTM and all the rest of it messing around. But we'll see how long that lasts. Um, but in my opinion, it will last long. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. And I'll see you in a bit.